Hey guys, Brennan here. Welcome back to Duncan Rumpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Um, last time we investigated the body uh, that we were unsure of the identity of. Um, and now we're heading into the trial. Hmm. Whoa, Biaki and Makoto showed up together. Uh. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. Hmm. We were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? <laughs> Makoto's ranked high enough for you guys to go off t together. Just the two of you. Huh? What, are you jealous? Hey. Or are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking and brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Bring Monokuma. Any second. He could show up at any time. When I imagined what happened, uh, when I was- when I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But... We stood there for five full minutes waiting for something weird to happen. Then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on here? Why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Could it be? Maybe he died again? Hmm. What should we do? Should we keep waiting here or. <laughs> or what? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Did I scare you? I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait like that? Hmm? What? I made you wait? You've got it all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words, I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start till everyone's here now, can we? Huh? What are you t talking about? Everyone is here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> I've been waiting ten minutes now, so, but I've been waiting ten minutes now, so is it okay if I punish the one making us all wait, right? <clears throat> if we all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange a punishment right now! If it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. When we heard that voice, we all spun around to look. Hey. I'm here, and no rule's been broken. K Kyoko! Uh. Kyoko, you're still alive? Uh. No! That's a g g g ghost! Stop t talking. If you want to fight, do it at the class trial. You need to save some of the fun for later, right? But, is it okay that there's no particular penalty for being late? Is that right? I made it here just fine. What school regulation did I violate? Am I wrong? You're so selfish! So spoiled! You're right, there's no penalty, officially. But, I bet you'll be sorry later. Shing. No, I'll make sure you're sorry later. Anyway, hustle your butts on the elevator. I'll be just one step ahead of ya. When Monokuma was gone, we all rushed up to Kyoko. Kyoko! Uh. So, you really didn't die? Indeed. Of course I didn't die. <laughs> Thank God! I'm so glad you're okay! Perhaps, but that's not necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? He's right! Now we gotta deal with the g g ghost I told- I told you. Stop talking. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Whatever we need to discuss, we can do it during the trial. Without ever looking directly at Kyoko, Byakuya stepped into the elevator. Master, wait for me. Um... 
<laughs> Good call. Who knows what might happen to us if we take too long. But... I'll be happy when this trial is all over. One after another, everyone piled into the elevator. But I... I couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Kyoko before the trial started. Listen, before we get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? So... Correct. I went to investigate the second floor of the dorms. The second floor? That's right. There aren't any monitors or cameras there, so I was able to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course, I also missed his announcement because of that. I had no idea a body had been discovered. Then, when did you find out? So... Just now. I finished my search and came down, just in time to hear the class trial announcement. I took some time to go over the crime scene first. I can't go to a trial completely uninformed, can I? I kind of just blindedly, blindly opened every door in the school until I found a body, and then I looked at it for a little bit. So... That's why you were late. However... I'm sorry I kept you all waiting. But if you were on the second floor of the dorms, then that's what the key you found goes to? Wrong. Actually, to be precise, not quite. In other words... I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. Dang, that's some funky fresh rhyming right there. What? Kyoko's account has been added. Just a second. Hey, what are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma! Makoto. We can go over the details after we get through the trial, okay Makoto? Right now I just want to focus on surviving our current situation. Because this is probably the single most crucial moment so far for me. For her? That's a strange way to put it. The class trial is important for everyone, right? So why would she say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. Well, if that's all. Seemingly unconcerned, Kyoko made her way to the elevator. I'm just overthinking what she said, right? Being the last one left, I stepped onto the elevator. Doors slid shut. This time, the clunking was loud enough to hurt my ears, and the dread began to consume me once again. I can't imagine I... I can't imagine ever getting used to the mental pressure that comes with prep preparing for an execution. In that dusky darkness, nobody said a word. We just stood there, silent and still. After an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. A dazzling light penetrated every depth of my eyes. But it wasn't the illuminating light of hope. It was the blinding light of despair. I can't wait! I can't wait! I've been waiting for this! I feel like it's been forever since we got together like this! The time for pointless jokes and jabs has passed. Let's get on with the show! And so the curtain opened for the fifth time. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Let's save. Boop. Alright, set my skills. Lost five SP. Yeah, I don't care. I don't need that. Use an argument to three statements or less. I don't understand what that does. <laughs> So I don't I, I I don't understand how it's useful because I don't understand how what it what it does. Eh. 
Eh, whatever. I'll just move on. Doesn't matter. Finish preparations. Let's begin with a basic explanation of if you yeah, can we, figure we know. it, then we I'll know. punish everyone. Yeah, we know. Lisa? Okay, yeah, we know. well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. Okay. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. Well, it's not Kyoko, and it's not any of us, so it's Mukuro. It's Kyoko! There's no other explanation. Thanks, Hiro. Thank you. But Kyoko's standing right there. No! That's a ghost! But she has legs and stuff. Well, that's just because she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology! <laughs> There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Makoto, please prove that Kyoko isn't a ghost. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? One important trait Kyoko has that proves the body doesn't belong to her. Her gloves. I got it! Her face! The body didn't have a face! They'll give us some insight into the mystery. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Cause, cause, you know, the, the face on that body, it got blown off. <laughs> In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh, you know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? Yeah, and they had fake nails. They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. <laughs> There's no way that corpse was Kyoko. But if I can't prove why, we're going to be stuck here and the case won't move forward. So I don't have any choice but to... It's gonna be the fake nails as the evidence here, I believe. Yep, fake nails. Oh my God, so many bullets. Kyoko there is just a ghost. Thanks, Hero. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. No. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. You're an idiot, hero. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Yeah. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides... Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Yeah. Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. I don't think you know people. If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then, <laughs> who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. Honestly, Hero, at this point, at this point, it might be you. <laughs> that's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. By Hero's logic, it could also be Hero. But before anything, we have to identify the victim. Everything starts from there. Alright. We we know it's fu it's fucking Mukuro. <laughs> She's the one person who's not here, but whatever. Uh fake nails, tattoo on the right hand. If Kyoko really is still alive. Then who died? There's gotta be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scored beyond recognition. That's not... Yeah, and there wasn't not. any description in the Monokuma file. Oh, if we can't identify the body... 
Oh. And there's nothing else we can do, right? I think it's the tattoo on the hand versus can't identify the body. But I I hit the white noise. Really I and who does? No, it's wrong. We can identify the body. This is the identifying characteristic on its hand. There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. <laughs> wow, wow, thanks, hero. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Well, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? It's a wolf. Her master must have made her get it. To be like, you're my bitch. <laughs> Seriously? It really did something that humiliating? Yes. I mean, technically, yes. No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. You can't convince me that that, that isn't part of it, though. Because it's it was done by the higher ups in the mercenary corps to identify you with the group, meaning it's basically the same thing as your master, i.e. I the higher up in the mercenary corps, telling you to get it because you're their uh, subordinate or bitch. You can compare the tattoo to other information we have. The victim's identity should be clear. It's, uh, it's the, 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 the profile. I got it! The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? The image that represents Fenrir is a wolf. Yeah, we we actually have to play Hangman's Gambit to get a four-letter word. That's pretty cool. Elf. Here we go. Ooh. Now I understand. What if you uh just accidentally the representation put representation of Fenrir is a wolf. It's a wolf. Wolf wolf. <laughs> Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. Stupid. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god Loki and the female giant. Man, after all this time we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. Yeah, most of the time she's just uh just kind of pervy. <laughs> a wolf tattoo. Then that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. Also, on that, on that sheet about the Fenrir Mercenary Corps, there was literally that exact symbol on the top of the page. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? No. <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Are you saying the mastermind is dead? And now we have to have a true last trial? Well, if we're having a class trial at all, the mastermind isn't dead. No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. I mean, yeah. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. Yeah, it just said she was the ultimate soldier. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, 
That other information came from... Kyoko. Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means... Kyoko got it wrong? Hmm. Who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time? And when she finally turns up, she gets killed! Usually, when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then, who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope Speak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! You never cared about that shit before. Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! Hmm. What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Mukuro? Hmm. Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Yup, that's it, Hero. You got it. Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then one of us killed Mukuro? Yeah. Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? It's Kyoko or me. Based on what we know, there can only be two suspects, Makoto and Kyoko. Yes. You've narrowed it down to Kyoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm there was no body. that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are Kyoko and I. ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Yep. Exactly so. So the only suspects now are me and Kyoko. Damn it. I can't let this stand. Somehow I have to clear my name. Um, I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? It's nearly 12 hours. That's kind of ridiculous. Oh, but what time did we find the body? 9 a.m. The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. So what time was the body discovered? At 9 o'clock. The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m. Since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe.
Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. Okay, go get the pickaxe and be back here by 9.01. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit, so I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... 7. Oh yeah, right around 7.30. Mm -hmm. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. The murder happened between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m., and I don't have an alibi from 10 p.m. till 7.30. Okay then, it looks like the game has begun. If I can't provide an alibi for that period, then I just have to prove the murder didn't happen during the time I don't have an alibi. a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. took place in the garden, right? I can remember there's something that happens there every morning at a certain time. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. Nope. That's not a contradictory statement. Shoot! It's, it's, it has to do with the sprinklers and the fact that the body wasn't, like, so. Um... It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. Is that more one of them? Yes, it is. Okay. Murder, I, should think. I think it's this one. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. The incident took place in the garden, right? If I remember, there's something that happened there at a certain time. We've established a time that took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night uh. and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of the class from up to 7 30. No? We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place I'm somewhere fire between that. 10 o'clock at night. No, it's wrong. Did it? Okay. Ooh. Actually, the murder was... couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. Okay. Well, technically, saying that... I, I would think that... If, if the sprinklers go off at 7.30, I think this the 7.30 part is more wrong than the 10 o'clock part. Because if you're saying... If you're saying that the bot that it took place in between 10 o'clock and 9 a.m., the fact that it actually took place in between 7.30 and 9 a.m., I, I guess the 10 o'clock part is the wrong thing. I was just thinking about that weird. It's it's whatever. Moving on. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7:30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7:30, then it should have been completely soaked. 
Oh, hold on! I remember this part perfectly! The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. Only on the top half. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? I poured water on it. Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such indecent words! I did not say anything like that at all. No, I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler? Are you trying to deny my entire existence? What is happening right now? <laughs> Man, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler, you better tell us why! She was unconscious while it happened, so it's fine, but like, jeez. I need to prove that it wasn't the sprinklers that got the body wet. All I have to do is hit Toko with certain evidence, and that should do it. Is this a bullet time battle over this nonsense? Are you actually kidding me? A bullet time battle over- I poured water on her in a bucket. making sure that it wasn't one of the other ones. Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry. What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on. Yeah. The reason only the top half was wet was because. While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place... After 7.30. Sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night. This morning, right? So I'm pretty chill right now. So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. <laughs> In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. Kyoko's the only one without an alibi, which would mean that Mukuro's killer is. No, I refuse to believe it. Kyoko murdered someone. That's... I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Yeah, that's chill. Which is why I can't let that happen. Huh? So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far the game and now you decide to blame me stop wasting time stop wasting energy you really think your little trick is gonna work yes Shut you you got it boss shutting up now anyway kyoko you actually did have a reason to kill her huh she did 
She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So, that was her motive? If she had a motive, and no alibi, well then... I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. Nah man, I did it. It's me. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet. But that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. It's the tarp. I got it! You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Yeah, the one side that's wet likely got pulled off the body and then flipped onto the, the dirty ground and collected dirt. And the other side stayed clean because that was the side that laid over top of the body and didn't touch any of the ground. Only one side of the tarp got dirty because that's the side that got covered in water. Mm -hmm. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. Wait, if, if the one side that was clean was on top of the body, why wasn't there blood on it? That that stab wound had some had some blue. Why would Kyoko say that? Why would she want me to want why would she want to make me look like I'm the killer? No, I can't think about that right now. That tarp. If it was used the way Kyoko said, the tarp must have touched the body, right? Yeah, why wasn't the blood? But the body Boy, something's not right. And what might that be? I can't worry about Kyoko's motivations. If I don't do something, everyone's gonna think I'm the killer. I have to refute what Kyoko said! Alright. Gotta say the thing about the blued. Uh, body before the explosion. By covering the body with the tar, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp... It was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. That's Since not a contradiction. it was down toward the body... Of course it didn't get dirty! Yeah. No, it's wrong! Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh, yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? Hmm. Huh? The blood was camouflage? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim? 
For somebody who only looked at the crime scene for 10 minutes, she knows a lot about this murder. some of the blood packs from the nurse's office. That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. Chicken. There was four chickens. I got it! Could it have been chicken blood? What? Chicken blood? When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Man, that's messed up. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. Yeah. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. Oh. Maybe, maybe they, um... They, like, took the jacket, wrapped the chicken inside the jacket, stabbed the chicken through the jacket, then just stuck the jacket over the body and shoved the knife into the person through the hole that was already in the jacket from when they stabbed the chicken inside the jacket. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree, that certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Definitely not. Um, I think so. Wait, no. Yeah. The head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping What settles what? They just killed the chicken in the jacket and then dropped the jacket on top of the body. Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tar, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they'd already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off, at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? <laughs> That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. And suspicion falls back on me again. But why? Why is Kyoko trying to entrap me? I don't understand. This guy's dead body has been added. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? 
Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 odds. Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? No, not that. I just remembered something super serious. Well, don't just stand there. Out with it. You know that knife we found all black and burnt? The one we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remembered. Listen, more important. Now that we have the knife, what are we going to do with it? We can't let Toko keep it, that's for sure. We don't know what she might do. I don't w want it anyway. Hmm, so what to do? Why don't you hang on to it, Makoto? Huh? Me? It's the knife we gave to Makoto? You don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. Yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? It's not that I hid it. It's just... I couldn't be sure of what actually happened last night. I thought maybe I really did kill her. Suspicious! Very suspicious indeed! The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto! Now I'm totally convinced he did it! Twelve thousand percent convinced! Considering everything up till now, I should be able to make it clear. I have to prove that I didn't murder anyone. I'm not the killer. Guy's dead body, body before the explosion, exploded body analysis, fragments for the good body. The knife we found lodged in the dead body. It's the same one we gave to Makoto. It really is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. If he did have that knife before, then that seals it. Makoto did it. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer? Well, getting stabbed is what killed her. Right? So there's no question. You took that knife of yours and killed her with it. What a horrible man you are, Makoto. I used that knife to kill Mukuro. No, there's no way. The knife we found lodged It's the same one we need. It really is, isn't it? If he did have that, that seals it. Just because I have it, that automatically... Well, getting stabbed is what killed her. Right? No. No, it wasn't. It's wrong. Wait, hold on. The stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. That should be clear from the description of the cover up we just heard. Lies! We never talked about what killed her! Yes, but we did talk about how the body was disguised, and that says that the jacket was lay. lay put over top of a dead body and then stabbed into, and there was only one stab wound. No, don't you remember? The killer covered the dead body with the tarp and then put the bloody coat on it, right? In other words, the victim never wore that blood-stained coat until after they were dead. Okay, fine, so what? So, when we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat, along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point, obviously the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her, and once to cover it up. The victim was stabbed twice in the same spot? No way that's possible. There you go. Look at that. The Monokuma file clearly states that there was only one stab wound. Oh yeah, it sure did. Totally forgot about that. From the knife, 
was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. Exploding the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. The explosion severely damaged the body, making it impossible to know what really killed him. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Oh, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but what's the deal with that explosion anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like that? If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. Uh, bomb. I'll tell you, I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic level spontaneous combustion. No. I might be dumb, but even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her, or we won't make any headway on this. There's only one explanation I can think of for the explosion it's the bomb. So I guess the fragments. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural, because of course. We saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. It's part of a bomb. Oh! Then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. Here's the thing, though. If it's me, how did I bring that bomb from the gym to the garden when I was in the group with everyone else? They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Yakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. We need to determine what ultimately killed the victim. I need to concentrate. Body before the explosion, Monik in the file, and... Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. I guess. Well, yeah, she was already told. Let me just check him out from the file real quick. Dead, however, for the blast. Give me time the knife. Yeah, awesome and struck in the head. And it wasn't me because of the knife, right? There's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. You can only think of one thing that could have killed her. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined. No, it's wrong! Mukuro died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. Yep. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything to do with it? 
The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. But then, what was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blonde object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe! How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely! Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. No thanks. I bet you just hit me with a metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground, and, and spit on it! Okay, thanks, Ki uh, Toko. Very cool. <laughs> I feel the same way! Looks like we're on the same page this time. Oh man, I'm totally excited about the thought of brutally murdering you. <laughs> we want to figure out what killed her, right? Jesus it just Christ. so happens we already know. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master! So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? It's the fucking arrows. I got it! Yeah. Mukuro was hit in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed him. It was the duct tape. And that something was the titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. Arrow? That's what the culprit attacked Mukuro with? Indeed. There's no doubt about it. Are you sure? That sounds kind of weird. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master? You have no right! I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. I don't blame Hina for doubting it, because there's one more thing about that weapon. One more secret. It's the duct tape. The titanium arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that, that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, cause in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? It seems like an arrow would just be too thick. No. No, that's wrong! <laughs> no, that's wrong! You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Duct tape. Another weapon? Duct tape fixes everything. Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably used this duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. One stick is weak, but put them together, and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. It's funny that, uh, character development in this game only took about... Mm, about ten people dying. You know, that's fine. <laughs> that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway... That explains the murder weapon. Oh my gosh, why is my why why does my phone always decide to blow up when I'm recording? Weapon in the dojo locker, it was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh no, you absolutely have. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? I mean I talked to her there when we first found it. Uh, oh, um. And also, the the key was in a room. Hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. 
You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. I have evidence? Evidence that Kyoko went to the dojo. Yeah, it's the... Uh, e. I got it! The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is... Right here. The key to the dojo locker. And how does that prove anything? Because... I found it in your room. It was... in my room? Don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't you? No, it's not that I want to defend her. It's just, there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just... protecting you. Hmm. What? She was protecting me? Then does that mean she... She knew I was being attacked. And she came to my rescue. Could that be when... Which would mean that Kyoko... She killed someone... For me? That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know. He had a room key. What? Yaki should know better than anyone. What does that mean? Her room key? She didn't have it. But we also know that she had another way to get into her room. Uh, Yaki's account, right? Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master, would you never hide something from me? There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But could I really have done that? Mm. Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I'm not the killer. You should understand that more. Yakuya. Master, would you never hide something? There's proof that you aren't the killer. Nope. Okay. Uh, what was Biaki's account again? Let me just really quickly check that. Just, just because I might be wrong. Oh yeah, no, that's not it then. Exactly what I I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya. The other piece of evidence I have. It's, uh... No. When the body was found. No. 
I probably have to scan something here. There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room. Correct? No. Um. God oh, damn it. Those words you just spoke. Exactly. I'm not the killer. You should understand that. Master would never have. There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're... you stated a theory earlier? You said I hid the evidence of my cut and then left the locker key in my own room. Ah, Correct. The wrong button. And Could I really have shot that, that twice? <sighs> oh, I can imagine I'm probably not going to get a great score on this Those one. Words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya. What are you hiding? Master would you never hide something from- There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Yeah, there we go. No, that's wrong. She couldn't have put it in her own room. Gotcha. If I'm right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Hmm? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Byakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room... Then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. No, that's not actually true. There was a clear contradiction in what Kyoko just told us. An obvious lie. But this... This just isn't like her. To try and save herself with such a desperate lie? Does she really feel that threatened? Because she's the killer? Or is it something else? Is there some deeper meaning in what Kyoko said earlier? If you vote for me, and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. The Mastermind's trap. The Mastermind is trying to trap Kyoko? But what if that's not really true? What can I do? What should I do? What should I... Mastermind's trap? The victim was Mukuro and Kyoko killed her? What does Kyoko really know? What am I supposed to do? Kyoko's lie? I'm the only one who knows it's a lie. I'm the only one who can expose it. But who can I trust? What am I supposed to do? The mastermind's trap. If you spend all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. We know the danger. But if that risk means solving the mystery, we have no choice. Am I wrong? What do I do? I have to decide right here and now whether or not to expose Kyoko's lie. Let's run away! No, running away isn't gonna solve anything. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's... Let's pursue it. There was a lie hidden within Kyoko's statement just now. A lie? Isn't that right, Kyoko? You said it. The burden of proof is on you. So let's hear it. Where's this lie, then? Kyoko is definitely lying. And it must be because she doesn't want to fucking die. There's some other deeper truth she wants to keep hidden. Using her own words against her, like a true because asshole. Given it to There's no doubt about that, right? You are correct. So I couldn't possibly have gotten into my room. No, you're wrong. You told me yourself you have a master key. No, Kyoko could have gotten into a room. 
You said so yourself, didn't you, Kyoko? Actually, to be precise, not quite. I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. What? Monokuma's secret tool? Kyoko stole it from the headmaster's room. It lets you get into any room in the school, which means she could have used it to get into her own room. Then I guess that's it. You're giving up just like that? You admit to killing... No, I'm simply recognizing that I lost. What are you talking about? Like I said, this was a trap. And I wasn't able to escape it. So I lost. That's all this means. Huh? Then... Are you saying... You really didn't... Kyoko, you really... Aren't the killer? Okay! Time's up! Huh? I'm sorry to say, but your time is up! All done! All finished! The class trial is all over! But, but that's ridiculous! Since when is there any... It's because you were late! So the trial started late and time ran out! So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you! But I guess we already know who the blackened is, don't we? <laughs> Yay, we killed Kyoko. Yay. Oh, God. Good job! You got it right! <laughs> Brilliantly right! We got it right? Does that mean Kyoko really is the killer? But something strange is going on here. There's something wrong with this whole class trial. Kyoko! Now then, I prepared a very special punishment! Wow. I've prepared an extra special punishment this time. Is everyone ready? Okay then. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time! Fun. Well, rip Kyoko, I guess. That's how the class trial of Mukuro Ikisaba came to an end. I still had to wonder whether Kyoko was actually innocent, or... Regardless, the truth was lost forever. Even for me. I just stopped thinking about it. That was the end of Mukuro's class trial. And in the end, it would prove to be our last class trial. 
Once that case was over, there was never a single murder at Hope's Peak ever again. We had obtained peace in exchange for the lives of all the others. <laughs> peace, but only inside the school. Peace, but only for us. That was the only hope we had. Hope. Oh, this is hope? No, this isn't right. Huh? Makoto, why are you staring off into space? Don't you have a rebuttal for Kyoko's claim? Her claim? Oh, that's right. I have to. Do I expose Kyoko's lie or not? Spent, yeah, we, we, we've seen this. We, I'm not reading it out loud again. <laughs> She's not wrong. I have to think about this very carefully. What do I do? Decide right now. We're gonna let it go this time. I've made my decision. I have to believe in Kyoko. There's no way she would kill someone. There has to be some secret here. Something that has to do with the Mastermind's trap that Kyoko mentioned. Well, does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? I see. So you still refuse to accept it. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room. That it was someone else. But who else could it have been? The only other person is me. I mean, Viapia had a room key, right? You! What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone, or put the key in Kyoko's room. Well, someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them, then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. What? It, it had to be Makoto, right? I don't see any other option. Wait a second! You've got it all wrong! Let's think about it one more time! There's gotta be a hidden side to this case! Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? Lucaro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead, and then we're thrown into a trial! And Kyoko even said, it's a trap the Mastermind set for us! So that's why... This has to be... Okay! Time's up! Huh? Time's up! Class trial's all over! Everyone can stop talking now! What? Time's up? Rip, Makoto. What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up. Since when have we... I, I like how, um, when Kyoko dies, Makoto... Makoto's the one saying the... There's no- what- what the hell? There's no time limit? Since when is there a time limit? And then, when Makoto dies, Kyoko's the one who says it. It's because you were late, so we had to push back the start time! So then, it's time well, for- I guess I should time. say when Makoto okay. is found guilty. Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you! Voting time? And when Kyoko is found guilty. Although, she straight up dies. Wow, A's all around. Nice! Now, who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice, or the dreadfully wrong one? Hey, hold on! What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What? You think I'm the killer? Sorry, man. Sorry. Yeah, s sorry. <laughs> it's all your f fault. Everyone, you're wrong. You've got it all wrong. I didn't do it. Yes, indeed. Good 
job, everyone! Good job? Yeah! Yeah! They got it right! N no I know that's not true! None of this makes any sense! This whole trial doesn't make any sense! Hey. It makes perfect sense! It's the same as always, it's just like all the other class trials, and I'm gonna end it in the same way. Drills, chill, it's time drills. for your heart-pounding, POSITIVELY THRILLING PUNISHMENT! Wait, why do I... Choco! I don't expect you to forgive me. I know this is all my fault. Choco? Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! And Makoto's dead. <laughs> Rip. different music. Huh? Huh? What's this? What's going on? Um... Hey, was that? Uh, um... Uh, yeah, it had to be. This is... Alter Ego. Yeah. Alter Ego. Is this some stupid virus from that stupid guy? Yeah. He must have planted it when he invaded my network. Damn it all to hell, I don't believe this! It seems you finally made a miscalculation. Hmm. No, you miscalculated from the very beginning. What the heck? What was that? In other words... What I'm saying is, you shouldn't have underestimated us. Hmm. Hmm. Why are you talking like you've already won? I barely felt a thing. It was a pinch. An itch. That stupid virus is gone now, got it? And so is Makoto. Maybe I didn't get to smash him flat, but you're never gonna see him again. Yeah! To waste away in a garbage-strewn pit. In a way, that's an even better special punishment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still not enough. I'm still not satisfied still gonna bring despair to the rest of you! Bring despair to the entire world! <laughs> Alright. Uh, um... Is he... gone? <laughs> hey, Kyoko, what's the meaning of all this? Just what the hell is going on? Calm down. It's okay. We're not the one being trapped this time. Huh? 
In other words... Now it's the mastermind that's ensnared. What, what did you say? What are you talking about? So... You'll understand soon enough. Very soon indeed. The massive high school towers over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable, a government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you already have to be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do, or lucky enough to win the lottery. No ordinary student could enroll here. That The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of this ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me. <sighs> what? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body felt heavy. It wouldn't be weird for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but what was I doing asleep here just now? It wasn't any classroom I'd ever been in before. What the heck is going on? <sighs> finally, I could finally feel my mind and body start to come back together again, and then I was awake. Or was this just another dream? A dream inside a hopeless nightmare? No. This isn't a dream. I could tell because the stench invading my nostrils was too powerful for a dream. What an awful smell. I was in a vast, dark cavern with the barest hint of light seeping in. Trash was piled high all across the area. This must be some kind of underground garbage pit. A heck of a situation to find myself in. But that was just the beginning of my problems. Was I going to be stuck in there until I wasted away and died? No, I can't let that happen! Not after what my good friend went through to save me. I remembered all too well what had happened. Alter Ego saved me. And he used up the last little bit of his strength to do it. So I can't give up now! For myself and for my friend! And with that, my pursuit of survival began. First up was to start looking for a way out of here. Is that an airplane? How'd something like that wind up in the school's garbage bin? This is a desk. It's probably the one that fell down here with me. That's a rocket and a tank. I'd better not think too much about what I'm seeing down here. Rattle, rattle. It's locked. Rattle, rattle. No matter how many times I pushed or pulled or kicked at it, it didn't budge. Getting out here isn't going to be that easy. Well, if I'm not getting out of here anytime soon, I decided to look around for some food. There's plenty of food here, but it's all rotten. But that was pointless too. Next, I searched for some water. How can I be sure which liquids I can drink, and which ones are an all-around bad idea? Again, pointless. I feel like I'm blocked in on all sides. But that's still not enough reason to give up. Because... Because I'm still alive! As long as I'm alive, I'll never give up! After making that proud declaration, the next thing I decided to do was... Go to sleep. 
My sleep was deep and uninterrupted. That was my only way to pre preserve what little strength I had left after not being able to eat or drink. I can't be sure, but I think at least a full day had to have passed. And all I did was sleep and sleep. It was like I was waiting for some kind of sign to come falling out of the sky. However, what fell down from the sky wasn't a sign. Not exactly. A crunch. What the? The strange sound pierced my silent isolation, jarring me awake. As I watched, the pile of garbage jostled and formed an odd shape. Did something fall down over there? Something fell from up above. What could it have been? Did a giant piece of trash just fall down here? I carefully stretched my hand out toward whatever it was that had stumbled down here with me. Just a second. A giant piece of trash. Rude. Before she even emerged from the pile of garbage, I knew who it was. It smells This awful. place smells awful. Kyoko? Indeed. You look like you're doing better than I expected. W what are you doing here? So... Isn't it obvious? I'm here to help you. I'm glad to hear that, Kyoko. Um, you've got a bit of garbage in your hair. She gave her head a quick, sharp shake to get rid of the trash and faced me again. Hey. First, I have something for you. Go ahead and eat it. We can talk once you're finished. <sighs> Thank you! I snatched the bread and water that she was holding out for me. Within seconds, it was in my mouth and making its way toward my stomach. Phew! That really hit the spot! Now I've got all the energy I need to keep going. <laughs> so you still haven't given up, then? Of course not! After all, the fact that I can keep going forward is about all I'm good at. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not such a bad thing to be good at. Alright, let's get out of here. But, Kyoko, why did you come to rescue me? So... To pay a debt. Or, no. To atone. Atone? You. During the trial, even though you knew I was lying, you didn't say anything. Oh, that's because I did saw the actions of what would happen if I did and then decided that's probably a bad idea. So, you knew that I knew. Indeed. But even though I knew, I did nothing to help you. Um. I abandoned you. Don't say that! You didn't abandon me! No, that's exactly what I did. I abandoned you in order to save my own life. You were trying to save me, and I couldn't bring myself to do the same for you. However... But listen, not that I'm trying to make excuses, but... There was a reason that I had to survive no matter the cost. Why did you have to survive? It's true. I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. The reason I have to survive In other words, is so that I can do what I came to this school to do. What? I made up my mind to come to Hope Speak Academy for one very important reason. So, you have some reason for coming to Hope's Peak? Indeed. That's right. At least, I did, once. Once? I... Until recently, I'd forgotten what it was. You forgot, but that's... I had no memory of what my purpose was. No memory? That's impossible! Amnesia? Then, is it really true? You lost your memory? Makoto. Do you remember, Makoto? Do you remember the first thing that happened to us as soon as we arrived at this school? The first thing? You're talking about when we fainted, right? I fainted, and when I woke up, I was trapped here. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself. A disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. 
I couldn't remember why I'd come to this school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It's much too convenient. Are you saying you think you lost your memory because... Indeed. I don't think. I'm positive it was the work of the Mastermind. They stole my memory. But why would they want to do that? There's only one reason I can come up with. Because of my purpose and my ability. Somehow, they knew. Uh, somehow, they would interfere with the Mastermind's plans. So, the Mastermind just stole them from you? However... And it could also mean... Somehow, my memories may be connected to the mystery of this school and the Mastermind. Which is why I have to get them back. That's why I've been investigating things by myself this whole time. But if what you say is true, why didn't you ask the rest of us to help you? Why is that? If I did that, and we all worked as one, the Mastermind would have noticed right away. Plus, there's always the chance that the Mastermind is actually one of us. What? Correct. Well, don't make too big a deal of it. It's just a possibility. But since it is a possibility, we can't ignore it, right? The Mastermind. One of us. If she believed that, then of course she couldn't trust anyone around her. In which case, it only makes sense that she would look to, into her missing memory by herself. However... That being said, there was a limit to what I could do by myself, which is why I asked you to help me. But why me? <laughs> Because among everyone, you were the least likely to be the mastermind. That was just intuition, but... I see. Your intuition was right, though. There's no way an ordinary kid like me could have been the mastermind. I... understand. I should... understand everything. My goal isn't to get out of here. It's... to stay here. It's just like the dream I had before, but why did that just happen? Listen. Are you okay? Oh yeah, it's nothing. It is nothing, right? Hey. Even now I still trust you, you know. It's just I'm not used to relying on others. Correct. I know I never asked you for help the right way, so I understand if you're not convinced. Honestly, I was convinced. I think that's just her personality. You said you had a reason for doing all that investigating on your own. So, how'd that turn out? Were you able to remember anything? So... I think there's still a lot I don't remember, but at the very least... I was finally able to recall my purpose and my ability. You mentioned your ability. I... My ability. What everyone should have known me for. I'm the ultimate detective. The ultimate detective? Correct. And the reason I came to Hope Speak Academy, there was someone I had to find here in the school. You had to find someone? Who? So... Well, it was the headmaster of Hope Speak Academy. The headmaster? Why did you want to find the headmaster? Because he's my father. What? In other words... I was separated from him as a child. As it turns out, he became the headmaster of Hope's Peak. Yoko's dad? Is Hope's Peak's headmaster? And that explains... When Alter Ego told us he thought the headmaster was involved... I... I'll find a way. Huh? Huh? I... No matter what it takes, I will find the Headmaster. No matter what? No matter the cost. So, um... Kyoko, what's going on? I... My memory hadn't come back at that point, but when he said that, I felt strange. Makes perfect sense now, of course, since my whole purpose for coming here was to find him. That makes sense. However... But listen, Makoto, 
I want to make this perfectly clear so there's no misunderstanding. I said the headmaster wasn't the mastermind, but I didn't say that to protect him. I only said what I felt based on what I'd seen when I snuck into the headmaster's room. Then, what did you see in there? So... The room had been ransacked. The shelves were a mess. The desk drawers had dumped on the floor. The only conclusion is that someone who didn't know where anything was had been in there. You mean the mastermind, right? It's true. That was my assumption, yes. And to confirm my suspicion, I decided to investigate the second floor of the dorms using the key I'd found. But why there? Because I also found this in the headmaster's room. This is some kind of map? Indeed. It's a layout of the entirety of Hope's Peak Academy. I found it in the headmaster's room, along with Mukuro's profile and that key. The map that sh the map showed that the second floor was home to a number of rooms meant for faculty use. Some of the staff must have had to stay overnight from time to time. And I figured the headmaster would have some kind of private room there. I assumed that if that were true, that room would likely hold more clues, so I went to check. Correct. And that's when I finally remembered. I remembered that my purpose was to find the owner of that room. So, you went there to see if the headmaster really did have a private room there. However... But once I got there, I noticed that the second floor of the dorms didn't have any cameras or monitors. So, what was it like? Uh, that part of the school, I mean. It's hard to describe. All I can say is, I... the moment I saw it, I realized, whatever's going on in this school is more horrific than we ever imagined. W what do you mean? So... I can't explain it. You need to see it for yourself, and I'm sure you'll get your chance soon enough. It sounds like it must be important. And really ominous. However... Which is why I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the building. It has to do with Mukuro Ikasaba, doesn't it? However... Just to be perfectly clear, I didn't kill her. And I know it wasn't you, either. I know you're right, but that just means... Everyone but you and me had an alibi, so then who did kill her? Anyway. What I can say for sure is that the mastermind is directly involved. To begin with, the point of the class trial of Mukuro Ikisaba was to get me killed. Get you killed? Indeed. I stole that key and disappeared, and in retaliation they wanted to draw me out and eliminate me. Correct. That was the point of the class trial. It was? The Mastermind knew they couldn't interfere directly. You mean, because of the school regulations? That's right. Exactly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope Speak Academy at your discretion. In other words... The Mastermind is adamant about following the rules, and with that rule in place, they couldn't step in. Since they couldn't kill me themselves, they tried to use the class trial to do it. The Mastermind couldn't step in because of the rules? That makes it sound like... The Mastermind themselves is somehow bound by the school regulations. Hey. There's one other thing I'd like to point out about the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. What's that? There was a point where Mukuro may not have become the victim. It could have been you, Makoto. I could have become the victim? Indeed. You know what I'm talking about, right? Do you mean... During the night? I... I can hear them, you know. The footsteps of the God of Death. What? I can hear the God of Death as he moves. That ability draws me into cases just like this. Anyway... Which is exactly what happened with you. 
I was in the dorms, and I had a sudden sense of dread. I looked down the stairwell, and I saw a white shadow cross the corridor. I gave chase right away. As soon as I followed it, I saw the shadow go into your room. Correct. I ran into your room and saw what was happening. I intervened immediately, of course. However... That wasn't the end of things, of course. I stopped them, but that led to... Whoever the masked assailant was, they ended up dead. Correct. And their murder was disguised, and the dojo key wound up in my room. It all has to be the work of the mastermind, in an attempt to use the class trial to eliminate me. So, all this would mean that whoever killed Mukuro is also the mastermind, right? Indeed. I don't have conclusive evidence, but that's what I think. But that's really bad if true. It means the mastermind can kill whoever they want if they feel like it. Wait, but doesn't that create another contradiction? The mastermind wanted to use the class trial to try to kill you because they couldn't interfere, right? Correct. You're right, that is a contradiction. And it's not just Mukuro. They needed the class trial to kill me, but seemed ready to kill you in your room. Everything they did was a contradiction. So, what does it all mean? In other words... It means the mastermind is the one who's been cornered. Huh? Makoto. Just a little more. A little more, and I should be able to figure out the mastermind's identity. The identity of the other ultimate despair. The other ultimate despair? There's no doubt that Mukuro was the ultimate despair, and that she's dead. But I don't think the ultimate despair is just one person. It's not? Indeed. If you think about it, the ultimate despair seems to implicate whoever caused that event. You're talking about... That's right. What happened a year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy. Who's ever responsible for that? They're the ultimate despair? That despicable group, whose only purpose and motivation comes from despair. And they're... Indeed. Make no mistake. They're the root of all the evil that has forced us to go through this. That is the ultimate despair. And that is our real enemy. Chapter 5, done! Alright. So. Alright, I'm just gonna say something real quick. Um, there's been a little bit of oversaturation of Danganronpa on my channel, uh, these last few days because I uploaded two videos in a row, and this is going to be the third Danganronpa video in a row without uploading any other series. And that was because, um... I initially did a Danganronpa video, um, just because I wanted to do Danganronpa to make up for, like, um, missing out on Tuesday last week, so I wanted to upload a video because of that, um, upload an extra video because of that on Tuesday this week, uh, but then I decided to do Danganronpa on Wednesday, which would have been the normal upload slot for this week, um, and today is Thursday, so this is going up on a day that's abnormal um like not the not the normal upload slots uh because if i'm doing every other day it would be wednesday friday then um start and then next week starting with sunday um but i think i'm going to do daily uploads uh until i beat danganronpa um i'm not gonna um do only Don Gunrompa until I beat Don Gunrompa. I'm just gonna do daily uploads until I beat it, because of the fact of uh, Persona Five Strikers coming out on the 23rd when I originally thought it came out on the 27th. 
So it's coming out a whole four days sooner, which means that if I want to beat Danganronpa before Strikers comes out, um, I'm going to need to uh, kind of speed up the pace a little bit with my Danganronpa content. And I figure a good way to do that is by doing daily uploads. Um, I think after this, there should be about two to three more Danganronpa videos. So honestly, I don't think I need to do daily uploads on the weekends, and I wasn't planning on doing that anyway. So there's not going to be a video Saturday, I don't think, um, but there may be. And if there is, it's likely just going to be another part of Danganronpa. Um, tomorrow's video is going to be Persona 4. Uh, Sunday's video is going to be Neptunia. That That is what I'm saying. That That's what I'm planning on. So, yeah. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of oversaturation of Danganronpa content until, uh, until I beat the game, but then I'll have beaten the game. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Danganronpa. Um, if you did, consider leaving a like, consider subscribing. Um, anyway... Bye for now, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace out.